I recently did a video on whether or not you need to fertilize your in-bed gardens or your raised bed that have actual soil medium in them mineral soil medium and the question was asked by many of you what do you do with soilless medium meaning peats coconut quars vermiculites perlite that sort of thing aka usually what you would put into a container and the answer to that is actually incredibly complicated today's video that is exactly what we are going to discuss if you do not know who i am my name is ashley and i like to think i know a little bit about nutrition that plants need because i have a bachelor's of science in soil science now with that being said that does not translate to soilless medium directly anyways but we can use a lot of that and apply it to soilless medium combined with some meta-analysis that we're going to look at here in this video here's the thing when it comes to soilless mediums they're inherently microbially inert if you will in 2022 soil ecology actually published that the microbe activity when compared to actual mineral soil in these bad boys here was 90 percent lower that's not a little bit lower that's a lot lower now the caveat to that was unless inoculated or amended in some way there is some hope there that we can increase the microbes now you're probably wondering why do we care about the microbes the reason why we care about the microbes is because without microbes there isn't much nutrient cycling taking place and therefore if you're using things like organic fertilizers they won't perform the same as a synthetic fertilizer because microbes need to be present in order to mineralize and nutrient cycle the organic compounds that are added whether that's liquid or compost or manure you name it if we choose to not inoculate our potting soil and we go with an organic anything bone blood fish feather compost manure nothing's going to happen it's just going to sit in the soil get smelly and do nothing in order to inoculate there obviously are inoculants you can also go for like an aerated compost tea this will have higher levels of microbes which then can inoculate these systems you want to avoid overwatering, which will cause anaerobic environments which will decrease the beneficial aerobic microbes that are present or we want present in these systems so what about synthetic versus organic when it comes to container gardens well these two are vastly different as i had mentioned i personally like to go this route because i find it to be the easier route to go with and that is using synthetics and that is solely because there's water soluble nutrients that is immediately bioavailable to the plant it's very easy to determine determine how much you need to add when you need to add it and there's no questioning whether or not it's bioavailable to the plants because I know it's bioavailable to the plants no microbes needed essentially and to back up the reason why I find synthetics to be so valuable was in 2020 a review done in agronomy showed that hydroponic and soilless mediums that used synthetic fertilizers outperformed organic systems heavily and it was consistently outperforming time over time over time and it specifically had a great benefit when the plants were smaller in nature because it had immediate bioavailable nutrients prior to the organics being able to mineralize and decomp in decompose so that immediate ability is the key particularly when we're talking beginning of the season but i understand if you are pretty dead set on going the organic route so here are some things that you could do to help increase the nutrient cycling or the bioavailability of nutrients in these systems and i actually have some of this backed up with some data for example journal of environmental horticulture published a trial which do with that what you will it's not a meta analysis and it's not a you know huge study by any means but it is something which I think we could probably hypothetically lean into and you're a gardener so does it really matter I don't know it's up to you I personally I'm a very scientifically rigor scientist in the sense that all options are options to me because that is what science is. Just look for all possibilities. And one possibility showing a 17% increase in microbial activity and nutrient bioavailability was the additions of worm castings. Fun fact. The ratio is somewhere between 10 and 20% by volume. That would be distributed throughout the entire container. Also may become incredibly expensive when we're speaking of larger containers such as these ones here behind me we obviously talked about the brewed compost tea now i'm not like a huge fan of this but some people absolutely swear by compost tea which is cool good for you awesome i'm glad it's working i mean that genuinely i have very dry humor so i think that probably came across as me not genuinely meaning that but i did genuinely 
mean that. So try that, it's an option. Next up is avoiding synthetic salt buildup. So if we're going to go the organic route, mixing in a slow release synthetic may or may not help us depending on if we go overboard. And then alternating between a liquid synthetic and organic spread throughout may interfere slightly. The only reason I say this is because it is a closed system. It is very limited to just whatever's here. If you continually are fertilizing with salt-based synthetics, I think you could hypothetically say it may cause some issues. So just keep that in mind if you're going to go for the dual route, which I do advocate for a lot. This may not be the scenario to do that in, particularly if you're noticing you're having issues. And lastly, probably most important, is not allowing these containers to dry out. So if your container dries out, for example, this beautiful succulent down here will dry out. It's not a great candidate for putting organic material into. But if you were smaller containers, you know classically dry out, don't go the organic route, only go the synthetic route, because every time that medium dries out, as we've discussed in other videos, the biofilm is the key to success when it comes to microbe health and density and diversity. Without that biofilm, which needs to water to be present, it won't happen. So continual, adequate, not overboard levels of water is going to be incredibly important in these environments. So quick recap here, soilless mediums are inherently inert when it comes to microbes and that's just because of the processing that takes place. Because of this, you cannot expect nutrient, organic nutrient to cycle right off the bat or at all unless you inoculate it or do something to it to help it. Synthetic fertilizers are fast and effective in sterile conditions and you don't have to do anything other than add the synthetic fertilizer, like what that bird said. He was cheering for synthetics, I think. A hybrid approach is definitely an option as long as we're smart about it, meaning we can use synthetics combined with microbially active ingredients, if you will, balanced, not overboard with either, and get some really great results particularly with that beginning season where we tend to see less microbial activity. So, Geek Crew, if you are going fully organic, I'd love to know. If you go fully synthetic, I would love to know. If you go hybrid, I again would love to know. Why do you choose to go that route? Do you find you suffer performance-wise or do you think that you're a okay I sound like a therapist right now. Anyways, I will talk to you later. Bye. That's what Google says to watch.